Aeterna, eternal city and ancient centre of the world. The Piazza Navona is situated in one of the Italian capital's most beautiful squares, in a city that has always been a dream destination for travellers from all over the world. Three large fountains adorn the large oval square that was built above the ruins of a Domitian stadium that dates back to the third century AD. This is the Baroque era of Rome that contains several of the city's most famous monuments and buildings. Even its impressive fountains have been well preserved. Thanks to numerous master builders, these magnificent fountains helped to create the perfect atmosphere of this city's many street cafes. Here the motto is, to see and be seen. The Romans had a special regard for fountains, the most famous of which is the Fountain of Trevi. It was designed by Niccolo Salvi for the facade of the Palazzo Poli. A tiny square surrounds the white baroque splendor of shells, tritons, gods and white horses. And Fellini's film La Dolce Vita contained an age-old message that those who throw a coin over their shoulder into the fountain will one day return to this splendid city. Pope Gregory XIII had the Palazzo del Quirinale built as his summer residence. But it was not long before the Italian monarchs acquired it as their Renaissance palace. Today, it is the residence of Italy's president. The daily changing of the guard ceremony is still a popular attraction in this remarkable city. La Dolce Vita in the Eternal City, where the past unites with the present. Colossal, elegant and excitingly beautiful. The Pantheon. This fine circular temple boasts the world's largest cantilever dome. The magnificent building was once dedicated to numerous Roman gods, but 1400 years ago it was transformed into a Christian church. Several Italian kings are buried within this spectacular building. A gentle beam of light enters the circular opening of the huge dome. The Roman Forum former centre of power of the Roman Empire, whose majestic power can still be felt today. For many centuries, this, once the heart of ancient Rome, was neglected. Fortunately, today, each of Rome's historic monuments are protected.
the valley marshland that once lay between the capital, Quirinal, Palatine and Velia, was drained during the 6th century by the Etruscan monarchs. In subsequent centuries, temples, basilicas, triumphal arches, memorial columns and further buildings were built on the Forum, and also stages for orators, and even memorials for the dead. This was once the centre of the civilised world. It was here that the Senate met, Cicero spoke to the citizens of Rome, and Caesar refused the crown. During the time of the Roman emperors, the emperor forums were built and the Roman forum was the centre of the city. The huge arches of the Constantine Basilica indicate the original dimensions of these massive buildings. This was the centre of politics, law and trading in ancient Rome. believed that on Palatine Hill, that is adjacent to the Roman Forum, Romulus founded Rome in 753 BC. The Roman emperors resided here for 400 years. The large area of ruins of the once splendid buildings extends over the entire hill. When Emperor Otto III decided to revive the Roman Empire, he chose the Palatine as the residence for his court. In antiquity, each of the imperial forums were public places. Victorious generals were honoured here and basilicas and columns were constructed in their name. Six-storey-high Trajan's markets were built here. They represented the power and prestige of those who built them. On the northern side of Capitol Hill is a huge monument of the first Italian king who ruled over the newly united kingdom, the Monumento Vittorio Emanuele. The eighth hill of Rome was Italy's largest and most costly national monument of the 19th century. The view over the Piazza Venezia is breathtaking. Construction of the altar of the fatherland took 26 years, a classical building with a semicircular portico. The 135 meter wide facade with its central statue of the king on horseback is particularly striking. Where the Temple of Jupiter and Juno once stood, in 1536, Michelangelo created the Campidoglio. Wide steps lead up to the square. In antiquity, this hill, the smallest of the seven hills of Rome, was the center of Rome's administration, 
and is now the residence of the city's mayor. Twenty-one metres high and twenty-six metres wide, the Arch of Constantine is the largest and most well-preserved triumphal arch in Rome. To commemorate the victory of Emperor Constantine against Maxentius, this memorial was built next to the Colosseum. Stone reliefs depict various battle scenes. In 72 AD, Rome's largest amphitheater was built at the command of Emperor Vespasian, on the site of what was once Nero's palace. His son Titus supervised the completion of the monumental building and held an inauguration ceremony that lasted for a hundred days. Bread and games were promised to the people. From this time on, the emperor offered to his citizens public entertainments that comprised savage gladiatorial battles that involved both man and beast. An ingenious design solved the problem of crowd control, and a system of divided corridors and seats separated the common people from the elite. Thus, via 18 numbered entrances, it took only 10 minutes for 73,000 spectators to reach their seats a masterpiece of planning. Up to 5,000 pairs of gladiators fought in a single performance, and as many animals were slaughtered. Mythological and historical battles with costumed warriors were also reenacted in the arena. Each morning, human beings are fed to bears and lions, wrote the Roman archivist Seneca. And in the afternoon, they satisfy the bloodlust of cruel spectators. Much has been done to preserve the amphitheater for future generations. And it is indeed a unique Roman landmark and historic symbol for the whole of Italy. In 200 AD, the Roman Emperor Hadrian had this villa and its large garden built as his country seat in Tivoli, east of Rome. The construction of this, the largest of all imperial villas, took more than 20 years, with government buildings squares, residential quarters, and a stadium. Between pine trees and ancient oaks, the emperor had water basins built, with Greek figures and marble arches, in memory of his numerous travels. This area of 120 hectares contains a large variety of temple complexes, some of which still remain partly covered.
Large thermal baths have been discovered that were heated by fires in subterranean corridors. A fantastic luxury of ancient times. The emperor came to this small romantic island in the Teatro Maritimo to enjoy painting and meditation. Perhaps this explains more about the great emperor than the mighty buildings of his time. Via Appia Antica. This was the most important street in ancient Rome, and it connected the southern area with the main city. Even today, one can walk over its ancient cobblestones. The old towers and gates of the huge city walls are still discernible. The most famous street of antiquity travels through the Porta Appia to the old town. It was here that Rome's elite had their luxurious villas and family graves. This huge complex of ruins is similar to a shopping centre of today, the Terme di Caracalla. Here, numerous baths, saunas, fitness centers, boutiques, hairdressing and beauty salons once served more than 1,500 Romans. Huge halls with cross vaults, corridors and walls whose mosaics are still partly visible. Dimensions that even today are quite amazing. In the Middle Ages, this area was densely inhabited. During the 19th century, it was a fashionable district. Today, Trastevere is the cultural quarter of Rome's upper classes. In the center of this district of tangled alleys and small squares, there are shops and craft centers full of traditional flair. Here, Rome is like a village. With all its bars, restaurants and tourists, this district has a special, intimate atmosphere. On the Tiber is the island of Isola Tiberina. It is accessible via a bridge on each side and is in the form of a ship. With its impressive bell tower, the San Bartolomeo church can be seen from far and wide. It was built in the 10th century on the ruins of an Esculapian temple. In the Middle Ages, it was used to isolate those with the plague. Today, it is a hospital for Rome's wealthy. How times change. A walk along the banks of the Tiber is very rewarding. 21 bridges span the soul of Rome, the lifeline of the city for thousands of years. Beneath the bridges along the riverbank, there's a relaxing atmosphere. 
fishermen and joggers enjoy the tranquility and strollers take in the magnificent views. Emperor Hadrian had this mausoleum built for his entire family, and the papacy had a castle built above it that was connected to the Vatican via a subterranean corridor. The world's most beautiful bridge leads from the historic centre into the castle. Bernini's ten glorious Baroque angels flank the bridge. The Castle of the Angel derived its name from a legend. The Archangel Michael appeared and placed his sword into its sheath. Thus, the plague was banished. Next, the most beautiful square in the world the 17th century St. Peter's Square in the center of the Vatican, an autonomous church state in the heart of Rome. An imposing and breathtaking sight. The Dome of St. Peter's, the largest Christian church in the world, designed by the most famous Italian architects of the time. The faithful travel here from all corners of the globe. This meeting point of Christianity is an independent state, with its own currency, newspaper, station and various embassies. Following the completion of the Dome of St. Peter's, a massive square was built to accommodate the countless thousands who were to come here for various religious ceremonies. St. Peter's was built on the site of a basilica that dated back to 326 BC and above the grave of the Apostle Peter. Although he did not live long enough to see its completion, Michelangelo designed the 136 meter high dome. It is supported by four columns and is decorated with mosaics. Everywhere there's an abundance of golden decoration. This was dominant in both Renaissance and Baroque times. Bernini created the canopy above the papal altar that is located above the grave of Peter. Its construction took more than a hundred years and in 1626 it was finally consecrated. It is the world's largest Christian church and can accommodate 60,000. Several popes lie buried here, and their graves and statues were created by famous artists. The Dome of St. Peter's is like a gallery that rises high above the Eternal City. From here, there's a wonderful view of St. Peter's Square the Tiber and the city. The Pope is guarded by an army of around a hundred, the Swiss Guard. The allure of this city lies in its combination of chaos and joie de vivre, elegance and creativity. Rome is a complete work of art. Roma, che bella!